welcome to Photoshop User TV, brought to you by the National Association of Photoshop Professionals. And now, here are your hosts, the Photoshop Guys. Hi everybody, welcome back to another pernicious episode of Photoshop User TV, brought to you by the National Association of Photoshop Professionals, the magazine, that Corey's holding up. Well, they're not the magazine. They're the people that bring you the magazine. You can become a NAP member and get that magazine. 10 times a year. 10 times a year. Yes, absolutely. Cool. And this one's a very nice, very nice cover story here. Nice. Awesome. And that was Mr. Corey Barker that was holding up that magazine. Hello. Welcome back again, Corey. We are back. It's been a while. Yeah, it has been. Yes. A whole week. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And joined again over in the Weather station. Weather station. Keeping an eye on the uh, flying washing machines. <laughs> Everything's good over here. We got a little spin cycle going there. It's it's nice over here. Tumble dry up yeah. top. <laughs> the Arctic's seeing a little bit of. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't even know where I was going with that, but hey guys, how's it going? <laughs> We're doing good, man. <laughs> All right, uh, guys. Real quick before we jump into the tutorials, we have another ebook special deal for you this week. So, if uh, Corey, you got a copy of it there? I do. I was unprepared. I, he jumped right into that. It That's was, a, like, sorry. It's, Here we it's have it. on our right. thing. Uh -huh. uh, so it is The Secrets of Great Portrait Photography by Brian Smith. Very, very cool book. Uh, lots, of, lots of neat information in that. You can get 40% off of it. So basically, you get the ebook for $23.99. And uh, all you got to do is go to peachpit.com slash Kelby TV and enter in a code. A code that is now not on the teleprompter anymore. So I can't give you, there no we go. And Kelby enter the code Kelby TV. So uh, peachbit.com slash Kelby TV. And but just we will be giving code. away this very copy. And we're gonna be giving away one of those at the end of the show. At, later in the show, yes. All right. Cool. All right, so Corey, what do you got for us this week? I have Oh, uh, you just saw the Iron Man trailer, didn't you? I did. <laughs> and everybody would be disappointed if I did not. It's actually, you know, if you're watching this, you know, it's, it was a week ago, but it's actually just a few hours ago they posted it. Yeah. So, yeah, Iron Man 3 trailer posted. I got so excited, the cool text effect, and I just had to play around with it. And um, actually found the font. If you see my screen here, I've got the font. Where'd you find it? Actually, it's at dafont.com. You know D-A-F-O-N-T. Yeah, D-A-F-O-N-T. They've got a lot of really cool fonts uh, to play around with. You know, just you know, be mindful of copyright issues and such like that. But it's... Uh, it's really cool. It's, it's a free downloads for the most part. Some of them you have to pay for, but there's just a lot of uh, fun fonts to really play around with. Mm -hmm. I tend to find a lot of movie fonts because everyone knows I like playing around with movie stuff. But um, I'm actually going to create that very text effect right here. Now, in previous versions of Photoshop, I would have used layer styles to do some beveling and other things like that. Well, what is beveling but merely just making it look like it has a carved edge? Mm -hmm. You can do that literally now with 3D in Photoshop. So you don't have to actually use 3D in the sense of making 3D text, but you can actually do it to create a very realistic bevel look. So I'm actually going to go ahead and turn this into a 3D object. Let's go to, it's just a simple text layer. I've gone ahead and set the text, go to 3D, new 3D extrusion from selected layer. And I don't need the extrusion that deep. I'm actually going to go ahead and drop it to like 20. Keep it very small. And for the front, face of this, we're going to add a texture. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new document here, and we'll just make it 12 by... So right here, when you have a front inflation in the 3D menu, I know this is going deep for some people. Everybody's like, Sir. some people's heads just exploded. Front inflation. Front inflation. So you go over here to diffuse and choose I that. I hate I, I've been kid. working on getting <laughs> rid of my front yeah, inflation for a while. Yeah, he's been trying to get that down. <laughs> So in that file, I'm just gonna, I've got this kind of brushed metal texture here. I'm just going to take that and drag it over. And when I close this document and save the changes, it applies it to the front face of my text. There we go. All right, so we're on our way. <laughs> I, I, I love it how Corey says we're on our way because I look at that and I'm like, I'm done. <laughs> that looks pretty cool. All right, so what I want to do now is add some beveling to this, to the edge of this text. So go and select the text object here in the 3D panel. And in the Properties panel here, you've got these tabs up top. I'm going to go over to the third one over where it says Cap. And in the Width, um, for the bevel, I'm going to enter 20. You can see the bevel has showed up. And we're going to actually shape the bevel ourselves, just like you would be able to in Layer Styles. I'm going to click on the Contour icon here. So does, I'm sorry, Corey, does the cap mean that the edge, the shape of the bevel? 
for it, is... Uh, it's the section where, the, where you edit the bevel, and you can actually do inflations on the front face of the text right here, too. It all manages the uh, beveling right inside this uh, section here, and, and it's these tabs up top. Okay. And it's just called cap. So why it's called cap, I'm not sure. But in the contour editor, I'm just going to add a control point. You can actually, it's as if you're looking at a profile, the cutaway of the beveling. Okay. And notice when I move that line down, it changed the shape of that bevel. See that right mm -hmm. there? So you can see it live. I'm actually going to take this one here and make it a corner element and then curve this one out like that. So there my bevel is reshaped and it's kind of it's like, the, like the face is dipped down inside of it now. Mm -hmm. So click OK there. So now inside of my 3D panel we've got the front bevel material. We're going to edit that particular material by first creating a new texture. Nope, I'm wrong. We're going to go down to environment. Aha. We want this to reflect, to kind of have a metallic reflection to it. So we're just in environment, new texture, and we'll click OK. So this is kind of a weird thing. It creates a document but doesn't open it. You have to go back in it and then choose edit texture. <laughs> so in here, I'm just going to apply a texture that I've gone ahead and defined. I'm just going to do a blank filled, a gray filled layer, and then apply it by way of pattern overlay layer style. And the reason oh, I like to use this. Please use the bubbles. I was hoping you were going to use bubbles. Not bubbles. The reason why I like to apply a pattern that I've defined as a layer style is because I have this scale slider. I can actually scale it. When you use this, the, sta the standard pattern fill, it just gives you what you, what you have. Mm -hmm. so, so click OK, close that, save the changes. Now I don't see the reflection because I don't have any reflection amount here. You can see it's set to zero. Yeah. So I'm going to boost that up to about 50. And with that, we should be able to see our texture in there. There we go. Do you see that in there? Mm -hmm. All right. So we're looking pretty good. Now I want to edit the front face again. Because in the original, it's actually got a red color cast over it. So let's put that in overlay. Ooh. Should just fill a layer with red and change it blend mode? Yes. Just change it. So I'll change it to overlay to give it that really kind of dark red uh, mm -hmm. look there. And there were, so there we have, well, we're looking pretty cool. Yeah. Not too bad. I like it. So in that, I'm going to go back to that bevel section. Now the beveling is reflecting in chrome because that's that color of that object that I filled. But let's go back and look at that. I'm going to create a new layer again. Color effect just like I did a moment ago. This time fill it with yellow and change the overlay. Ooh, now it's gold. Mm. It's not chrome. So we'll go back in here. And ooh, oh, I got it. Looking pretty good. Now I'm going to go back into that text here, and this is really easy because you can access these texture faces from within the layers panel. I'm just going to double click on that again, and I'm going to add. And this is kind of a cool cheat when it comes to 3D. I need the text object to. Okay. So I'm going to use my pen tool real quick. This isn't, well, this isn't really what I planned. I'm just kind of throwing this in as a bonus. I'm adding a little shape here. It's just an odd abstract shape. And I'm just going to do a white gradient. Foreground the transparent, coming in from the top, do something like that. And let's bring the opacity down. And when I close this, save the changes, it's going to give me a little bit of a glare. Like up a top shine, there. yeah. Yeah, a little bit of a shine up top there. Cool. And then lastly, by default, it's put an infinite light on there. I'm actually going to turn that off. I and hate add infinite lights. A spotlight. Oh, so it's more directional. More directional. I'm actually going to tilt that up and then slide this up here and widen the scope of that light. You just go over here to cone in the properties, just increase that size and notice how it gets wider and wider. Hmm. And then we'll just do a render, and there you have Iron Man. Animations too. Animations too. <laughs> so it's just, just doing a progressive render. All I did was press Shift Option Command R, and it does a progressive render, giving you a nice high res version of that. But that is how you can get true beveling of text and to be able to edit it in a true 3D space yeah. using 3D uh, using the 3D. Uh, yeah, if you're a designer, that's that's the way to go. You can mm -hmm. you can create some really really solid design effects. Yeah, with, and, uh, and the fact that you can edit 3D. and manage the reflection properties on each surface, the bevel and the front and the yep. sides, you can manage all that all within the 3D panels. Okay, we got to take a quick break. I wanted I. I I have two. I have so I'm such a small part in this show. Um, I have two tiny little tips. I was going. I'm going to do one after the break. I want to do one really quick now. It'll take literally 15 seconds. Mm -hmm. So if you can switch to my computer, uh, 
if you go up down here to the filter menu in CS6, if you go to blur, field blur. So I saw somebody show this and I thought it was really cool. Take a picture of a city at night and just go to field blur. Check this out. So when you crank up the blur settings, yeah, it obviously makes it really blurry. If you go down here to light bokeh, you get these really neat backgrounds, like almost as if you took them on a city street, you know? Oh, sure. So you can kind of mess with that a little bit. And then you get all those little, all the cool little bokeh circles and you can make it brighter, you can change the colors. Anyway, lots of, lots of fun to play with, just to, well, just one to open the, up different backgrounds. One of the things I love with that is if you find you're having a hot spot that's blowing it out, you really like what's going on, but you've got one spot that's kind of troubling you, that bottom slider, you can adjust the, the uh, oh yeah, the brightness, yeah, the light and the range. darkness to, to decide, kind of give it a little more control over what's going to really show up there. Yeah, it's almost like kind of almost kind of like levels down there. Yep. Anyway, so that was my impromptu tip of the show here. Yes. Uh, hey guys, we're going to take a very quick break. When we get back from that break, um, I have a tiny little Lightroom tip, and Pete's got a, a tutorial for you as well. We'll see you back here in just a minute. Right. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to Photoshop TV. We are the Photoshop guys, Corey Barker. Hello. P. Collins. Yep. And me. <laughs> hey, want to give a, a big shout out to one of our sponsors, which is mpix.com. They just released an app, all right? This app, it, it's a, it's a, it does something that, that I, I, I totally believe in. It is meant to take your pictures from your phone and just send them off to get printed. So the ones you take with your phone, your camera phone? The ones you take with your, 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 your camera phone. So you have a direct line right to MPEGs from your phone. Just, just print them. That's and I always tell people, you know, if they're, cause that's our point and shoot camera these days. You know, nobody, I, I don't carry a oh, point pretty and much shoot is. camera And their shoot never been as good a quality. So yeah, you, 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 we take most of our photos with, with, with these little, uh, with these little, with these little guys right here, print out the photos guys. Seriously, these are, these are the memories and I know nobody backs them up and all that stuff. So print them out and that way you have, you have all those things. It's, I don't know, it's like 20, 30 cents a print, whatever it is, but you can upload straight there. Don't edit them, don't do a thing, just upload and print. Yeah, you made, you talked about that on the grid last week and it made such perfect sense because yeah. we've got so many images that we take of our kids and stuff on the phone and, and we forget about it and we think we'll always have the phone, but if the phone's lost or stolen or anything like that, going yeah. ahead and just being able to go, hey, I got some great memories, boom, boom, and you have that backup print the, the way awesome. the way I figure, how many do you? I know I know some people are saying I take a thousand a month. Okay, how many do you really take a month of your family and pictures that that you like? Print them out on the first of every month. Just upload them and print them. Don't edit them. Don't even don't even go through. Just if it's if it's thirty, print them. It'll cost you nine bucks. Okay. Anyway, Corey's Corey's got moving text going on on his. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I was animating my Iron Man text. So. Well, and I want to jump in real quick. The, when we're watching Corey, a lot of times we'll sit here and go, what the heck is he doing? Because he does work <laughs> on another, a different level. Believe it or not, we, we sit here and say that too. So and so people you. watching at home, you can get kind of caught up in the, holy cow, that looks complex. Yeah. Well, to be honest, it really is just learning kind of the interface of those panels. Once you get those down, mm -hmm. that's that's the big learning curve. But it really isn't as difficult as it may seem as you're watching. Well, it. and it's it's that much easier now because earlier, you know, in last version they had the re big repose panel, which was wildly intimidating to everybody. They'd open it up and they're like, oh my god, I don't know what to do. Right but now it's just, it's it's much more streamlined uh, through panels. You've got the 3D and the properties panel, 
and it really helps you manage those properties a little bit better. But if you, you put mine on screen here, you can see what I'm doing. I animated it. Because you can <laughs> actually animate 3D objects in uh, CS6. So there's a lot, you can see the, re the reflections are reacting and everything like that. So a lot of, it's really come a long way, being able to do what you can do with 3D and animation yeah. in Photoshop. And so. if you're a NAF member, Corey's got tutorials on the NAF member tutorials. website that, that do lots of 3D stuff. And in fact, uh, there's going to be some new stuff new coming. New stuff coming, yes, absolutely. Coming soon, yeah. so uh, mm -hmm. well, stay and tuned. The thing, and the thing is, a lot of people, I know myself, if I'm watching something and he gets to a step where I'm like, I'm not really sure what he did there, I tend to close out and go, okay, that's for somebody else. But you really can do what he's doing if you just take a little bit of time. Go watch his tutorials. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he can show you that it, it's not as hard as it looks. And it is such a fabulous thing that they've put into Photoshop. Very much so. Cool. Uh, yep. All right. Speaking of 3D, I'm going to jump into Lightroom. Sweet. Do you like that segue? <laughs> that, that, right. new, that new 3D plugin in Lightroom is awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I just got a very, very simple tip here in Lightroom. But uh, it's, it's, if you don't know this tip, it, you're going to just jump out of your chair and, and cheer. Um, I know I did when I first learned it. So here's what happens. We use the adjustment brush or the graduated filter. This tip works for either one of them. And you, know, you tend to move all these little sliders inside of here. And then what happens? One day you decide, oh, I just, I just want to adjust the exposure. So what would you do? You'd have to reset all these to zero, which you can if you double click the name. You can reset them to zero. Or if you just double click on effect, it resets them all to zero. See that, you know, when you first showed me that you could click on the name to reset it, that made me happy too. But then I'd be going in and resetting all that. That that's huge right yeah. there. Yeah. Seriously, all you got to do is double click effect. It resets everything to zero, and then you can come up here and just mess with the one you want. It works exactly the same under the graduated filter as well. So, just a, a real quick, simple tip. But man, it, it was one of those things when I first learned it. I remember how much it sped up, uh, sped up my uh, my light rooming. Graduated. It's sort of like when you first up. discovered you could do the, the scrubby sliding for opacity and like, stuff woo. like that. Yeah. Yep. Scrubby sliding right, is one Pete, of the coolest what do you got? things ever. What have I got? Well, I've got a uh, follow-up on talking about collages. And I want to show you how to create a nice template to create collages that are not just your, your normal everyday collages. Uh, and the first thing I'm going to do, I've got right here, I've got this set up as a grid of eights. So they're, they're eight vertical sections, eight horizontal sections that you're going to use as a template. But for a quick refresher, all I did was come in here with my marquee tool on a new blank layer, and I just fill it with white. And then I take and I use Commander Control J to copy that using my move tool. I just bring that all the way over to the other side, holding my shift button to constrain it horizontally so that it just goes straight across and doesn't go up or down and I make sure I have one on each side, okay? I've got two vertical lines. Well, if I want a section of eight areas that I'm gonna put the, the photographs in, I'm gonna need nine lines. That's just the way it works out. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm simply, I've got two lines, I'm gonna hit my Commander Control J seven more times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I should have nine stripes in there. All of them are over here except for the very first one. I'm just gonna, select all nine of those by holding my shift button down. They're all selected. And now if I do a command or control A, it gives me a selection around the entire canvas. Mm -hmm. And I, I've talked to you all about this before. Using this distribution stuff up here is really gonna speed you up. I simply hit the third icon from the right up here and it spaces them out evenly. Okay, so real quickly, I've been able to create eight vertical spaces that are evenly spaced out. I've showed you that before, but this is what I wanted to show you is I can get rid of those and I can get rid of those. Oh, I've got to get rid of that first. There we go. Delete. Now I've created that with a vertical eighths and a horizontal eighths. You can see here if I bring them back up, this is all simply a selection of the vertical lines I just hid and now those are the horizontal lines. And what I want to do is I want to keep them in their individual spaces because this is how you're going to be able to adjust them. I've got them grouped vertical eights and horizontal eights, and I'm just simply going to apply a layer mask to each one. Now let's say I decide I want to do a layout and I want to take and make this corner section a larger section that I'm going to put up a bigger photograph in. Well, I just simply make sure I use my selection tool around this vertical area here. I go to my vertical mask 
and I just fill it with black and it hides that vertical section in there. Now the thing that you're gonna realize is that you've gotta make sure that you don't go too far or you will clip out that part down there and that's not gonna work. But as long as you keep things going just inside the vertical and horizontal, you're gonna be good. What I mean by that is now I come to the horizontal, as long as I don't travel up to here and clip out that top frame, if I did that, it would clip out this top section of the frame. I wanna undo and just make sure I hit these horizontal sections here, fill it with black. Now I've got a nice clear window to put whatever picture I want in there. And so I've created a nice template here that I can now come in and I wanna make a very big one right here. I'm gonna get rid of these vertical sections, fill that with black, come up to a horizontal, just get those sections right in there, not touching this line nor this line, fill it with black and I've got another big crisp window that I can put stuff in. So you can see how by creating this grid and this template, you have created a section that you can make your own individual template that you can place long ones, vertical ones, square ones. You can make up whatever you want just by simply coming in and using the layer mask on the vertical and horizontal. So it's a, it's a simple way to create and, and plot things out using Photoshop, using layers, using layer mask, and being able to create your very own template for collages. Very nice, Mr. He's Collins. He's clever, that Pete. He is clever. And well, I'm, and I'm surrounded by cleverness. I feel, uh, I feel very unclever when I'm sitting next to you guys. Well, and the whole key is to make sure you have your horizontal lines and your vertical lines in two separate groups. So when you hide the horizontal, the vertical lines will cover up where you've cut those lines with the mask. Yeah. I mean, they haven't disappeared. I can, I can come in here and re, you know, bring back in or move it around because they're all layer masks. But it's as long as you have those two on separate layers, horizontal and vertical, you can swap them in yeah. and out all day long and it'll hide the cuts underneath the other one. That Pete knows his stuff. I had my cuts. I am, Sometimes. Uh, take me out of the room and, and you'd have like the most creative room in the, in the world. Oh, here. come on. <laughs> Seriously, you guys like dwarf everybody around. Anyway, uh, all right guys, we're gonna uh, take a very quick break. When we come back, we have our uh, little prize to give away, a couple other things. We'll see you right back here in just a minute. It's hard to, to work with colors. For me, hard to imagine to create my black and white images without using the Software Effects Pro tool. These tools are very important to me. Simple as that. Hey everybody, we are back and about to close up the show here real quick. Um, there's a couple of seminars that might be coming your way. I have them up on my computer screen here. If you go to kelbytraining.com slash live, uh, you can see any of the seminars that we do here. Uh, you'll see Scott and RC, uh, one of the two of them are doing the Adobe Photoshop Photographers Seminar Tour. Going to DC on October 29th, Boston, November 7th, Fort Lauderdale, December 3rd, Seattle, December 6th. Ooh, it's cold in Fort Lauderdale in December. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was going to Lauderdale. I like it there. Uh, Joe McNally's doing his one light tour. Philadelphia, Tampa. Oh, come back. Come back again. All right. I totally screwed that one up. He's going to Philadelphia, Tampa, Houston, and then I'm doing the Lightroom 4 seminar tour. Toronto, Sacramento, and San Diego. So kelbytraining.com forward slash live and uh, you can live in any of those cities, near any of those cities, we'd hope you come by. Absolutely. All right, what do we got for a prize this week, Corey? For prizes this week, we have more on one goodness. We have Focal Point. Ah, this is a good one. I like this one. Cool. Yeah, nice. And of course, you saw this earlier. We're going to be in a way of very, the copy of this very book we talked about earlier. This awesome. very copy right here, right here, you will have it. And the way to get it is to go to kelbytv.com slash 
contest. Go in here into the menu, choose Photoshop User TV, enter your name, email, a website if you wish, and a comment. Whether you a request for the show, uh, how much you don't like any of us or do like any of us. No, only good requests. Only good requests. We'll give you the chance of winning, so definitely check that cool. out. But, uh, there I'm you have it. it. All right. All right, Corey, thank you for joining us thank today. Thank you, absolutely. Mr. Pete Collins, thank you for your creativity. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, and real quick, I forgot to mention, if you want to find out more about like what I was doing with the templates, I've got three different tutorials over on the NAP website. If you're not a NAP member, make sure you go check it out because it's a great place to be. We're there every day doing different stuff. We've got new tutorials and all kinds of stuff on the NAP website, so check it out. Indeed. Great. Right. Guys. On behalf of everybody over at the NAPP, we thank you for watching this week's show. We'll see you again next week. Take care. Bye.